Uh, this is attorney Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago as usual. And today we're going to look at Sovereign Citizen Court Fail number three. Let's do it. Well, we have a couple of clips here. This should be fun today. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of an update. Uh, I, I did a video on Ryan Alton where he threatened to sue everybody under the sun. And uh, I, I got a little update on that, uh, that that is more recent. And then um, we'll do a little uh, a little visit to Herbert Studstill. And after that, then a plain old fashioned sovereign citizen court fail. All right, like I said, I did a video on Ryan Alton. Uh, it's called Sovereign Citizens number four, links in the description below. But I'm gonna give you a little piece of that to set this up. Man. I'm gonna sue the f out of you guys next, you know that? Who did you sue the Next, you're next, you guys are next. Oh, Naperville. I'm currently suing Kendall County and Bolingbrook. And I will be suing DuPage County, Aurora, PD, and, take a guess. Cook County! <laughs> Hello, people. So it looks like the district court has officially granted my informal papyrus. Um. <laughs> so Ryan's all excited that he got his impoperous petition. Uh, Granted, all you have to do there is show that you don't have any money. That, that's all he's done so far. So we did file something. He's got a case caption in federal court. It's in the Northern District. Uh, this thing will be heard in the Dirksen Center in downtown Chicago. I've been there many times. And uh, th this is pretty funny. So clerk has issued summons for services on the city of Bolingbrook. The U.S. Marshals is appointed to serve the, the defendants on this case. So yeah, um, it looks like uh, everything's a go on this one. So there's a, another lawsuit that I have officially started the procedure on. Well, on their end, they're going to have to start uh, responding to my lawsuit. This has been granted. It's been filed and it's been accepted by the courts. Now I'm just waiting for them to be served. <laughs> I absolutely love it. The irony is awesome. Uh, you know, the usual sovereign citizens, they, they want to fight about jurisdiction, but he says he's waiting for them to be served. Well, for once, the court does not have jurisdiction. They have sub subject matter jurisdiction, but they do not have jurisdiction over the defendant. <laughs> Oh, Ryan thinks they have to do something. They don't have to do squat until he gets them served, which is that difficult. They, he probably will get them served, um, but uh, it's still hilarious. And waiting to hear their answer. So Kendall County is done with. Bolingbrook is officially done with. Um, so yeah, uh, I got Kane County next, DuPage, Cook. So yeah, you know, Things are going, I mean, it's a timely process, but um, at least it's being taken care of, and uh, yeah, I can't wait for the outcome. All right, guys, later. Well, I'm with you, Ryan. I, I'm interested in the outcome of this as well. In fact, I'm probably going to uh, uh, have my assistant, Yesenia, um, track that. Uh, federal cases that you have to go through thing, a thing called PACER, and I really hate the program, so I usually make poor Yesenia do it. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll put Yesenia on here so you can see, you can see uh, what we're dealing with. Give Yesenia some love in the comments. She's been putting up with me for like five years now. Okay, I'm going through a couple of these civil filings because I get a lot of questions about this in the comments and it's more what I do. I actually do civil work. Uh, so when I was uh, researching Herbert Studstill, I, I came across some of his uh, of filings and they are absolutely delicious. If you don't know who Herbert is, this is all you need to know. 
fucking 90s, Mars. Do not break my automobile. Oh, damn it. Okay, this is fun. Here's a complaint that Herbert filed a while back. And like Aaron, he uh, he got a, he got an impoperous petition granted. But, uh, you know, it goes on for just a couple of pages, but th th this is delicious. I just want to read this much of it. It says, this matter is presently before the court on plaintiff's application to proceed in form of pauperis. For the following reasons, the court shall, one, grant the application, therefore, and allow the complaint to be filed without prepayment of filing fee. And two, dismiss the complaint because it's frivolous and fails to state a claim upon which relief may be granted. <laughs> They simultaneously granted his impoperous petition and dismissed his case at the same time. It's it's hilarious. I, I think that, uh, you know, Ryan's going to end up with the same fate, but it's going to take him a little longer. Okay, and here is just another courtroom fail that I ran across. It's really old. It's over 10 years old. It's out of New Hampshire. And um, uh, I just haven't seen it before because it's so old. Uh, uh, but it's fun. It's It's got some really good parts to it. I was just in enjoying myself at Pumpkin Fest uh, when I was kidnapped by agents of the state. My property was stolen from me and uh, I was put in a cage for almost two days. <laughs> Translation, I was arrested for smoking pot. Um, this was in violation of my natural rights, my right to life, liberty and property and my rights as a sovereign individual. And it was also in violation of Article 2 of the New Hampshire Constitution, which states that all men have certain natural, essential, and, in and inherent rights, among which are the enjoying and defending life, liberty, and property, or, <clears throat> excuse me, not property, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and in a word, of seeking and obtaining happiness. Bill, let me ask you a simple question. It's against the law to be in possession of marijuana in the state of New Hampshire. Do you think you have the right to possess it? Yes, the law is in violation of both my natural rights as a sovereign individual and in violation of the Constitution of New Hampshire. Well, I like this. Uh, the judge gets straight to the point, asks him a straight question, he gets a straight answer. The defendant has it wrong. Um, you know, he's, he's still subject to the laws of New Hampshire and he's going to be convicted as a result of it. But we're, we're, we're not uh, playing around here where everyone's being up front, which is nice. It's in, in violation of Articles 2, uh, 4, 5, 6, and uh, Article 10, which is the right of revolution, uh, government being instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the whole community, and not for the private interest or emolument of any one man, family, or class of men. Therefore, whenever the ends of government are perverted and public liberty manifestly endangered, and all other means of redress are ineffectual, the people may and of right ought to reform the old or establish a new government. The doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. So is it your position that the laws of the state of New Hampshire don't, do not apply to you? It is my position that the laws of the state of New Hampshire are immoral and in violation of uh, both my natural rights and the Constitution. Uh, I'd like the court to point out the victim in the case. Certain, certain crimes that are, are victimless. Uh, these laws were pertaining to marijuana was passed for protection of society because somebody in their infinite wisdom thought that marijuana, possession of marijuana was a crime. Are you it's, not up, it's, not up, it's not up to me to argue whether you know, possession of marijuana should or should not be a crime. My job is simply to determine whether or not you did in fact violate the laws of the state of New Hampshire in the sense that you may or may not have had uh, marijuana in your possession and that you may or may not have resisted arrest. I actually really like this judge. Uh, that's a very good dispassionate uh, explanation of the situation. He does not get rattled in the least. He just calmly responds with, uh, with good logic and the law. I don't pass the law. It's not up to me to decide whether a law is right or, or not right. I think this is really interesting looking at it from this perspective because uh, marijuana has become legal in a lot of states, probably as in New Hampshire, I didn't even look it up, but it, it, my guess is it might be legal. It clearly was not legal. This is like 10 years ago. It was not legal at the time. There is no debate about it. 
but it does show the the usual problem that the, that these sovereign citizens have. You know, there is there is a method of doing that. Uh, enough minds were changed and votes were cast, and uh, I don't know if it's legal there yet, but it probably is. And if it isn't, it's legal in a lot of states now. So that that change has come through the proper channels, and the legislatures have decriminalized that in a, in a lot of the states. But that's not where we are right now. You're in violation of the law, and that's just the fact. Um, uh, who do you work for? He, 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 he works for the state of New Hampshire, and, and I believe we've been through this uh, routine before. Uh, is, there any, is there anything further you wish to say regarding these matters? Um, I don't think this is a fair trial because uh, both the judge and the prosecutor are on the same team. You have the right. If I, if I should find you guilty, you have the right to appeal, <laughs> take that issue to a higher court. Okay, I've heard this horrible argument a thousand times. Uh, the, the judge and the prosecutor work for the same team. I guess they're both government employees, but the, the judges in the judicial branch, the prosecutors in the executive branch, they don't work together. There is no conflict. That is the scenario for 99.99% of prosecutions in the United States in all courts. Uh, if, 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 the, if they both can't be government employees, I, I, I don't actually even get the contours of his argument, what he means by you both work for the same team. Um, but if, if the, you can't have both of them be government employees, then what? We have to have uh, private prosecutors. I guess we could appoint special prosecutors, but uh, we don't have to. It hasn't been that way. If, if you were to rule that way, you'd have to overturn pretty much every conviction in the United States and open the prisons. Nothing further. Uh, based on the evidence before me, I do find that you had marijuana in your possession. I am satisfied that the... Uh, chain of custody indicates that the <coughs> substance that was removed from your body in your possession is the same substance that was delivered to the state crime lab and analyzed as marijuana and it is the same substance that has uh, found its way back uh, to be exhibit number one in this case. I also find that you did resist arrest. It may have been a peaceful resistance whether you want to call it dropping to the ground, lying on the ground or whatever, but uh, you did uh, in a peaceful way attempt to hinder your arrest and I will enter a finding of guilty on that complaint also. Uh, what is the state asking for? Uh, regarding the marijuana standard fine, $350 plus the 24% penalty assessment and on resisting arrest, um, a $500 fine, all of that suspended for one year upon judicial review. So you're, you're asking for the uh, the five hundred dollar fine on the resisting to be suspended. One year. One, for one year, and the uh, fine on the possession of marijuana to pay. Correct. Uh, do I get to say what I believe the sentence should be? You do. Um, not only should I not be further aggressed against or forced to pay any fines, I should be restituted pecuniarily for the time I spent in jail, and I want my property returned to you. <laughs> I love it. I, I not only should I not pay the fine, you've just been convicted, and uh, the prosecutor uh, bent over backwards to do the nicest thing possible for you. But not only should I not have to pay my fine, you guys owe me money, and I want my marijuana back. <laughs> Would you say your property? You mean your uh, your state's exhibit? Yes. One. Not only will I deny that request, but I will grant a motion when it's filed to uh, destroy it. Okay. I hereby announce my intention to appeal this decision and I request a stay of sentencing pending the appeal. I oppose the sentence uh, as far as uh, the payment of any fine that I should impose. That will be stayed until uh, you've completed your completed the appeal process. I want to make it uh, clear that I have no intention to pay any fines. I will still let you complete the appeal process if you make it your intention to not pay the fine. Uh, you end up going to the House of Correction. Well, there you have it. Uh, more sovereign citizen fun. We started off with uh, two sovereign citizen civil claims that are going absolutely nowhere. And then we finished it off with an old but good 
basic sovereign citizen fail on a possession of marijuana and resisting arrest. Here at Law Talk, we do a lot of videos answering common legal questions. We also do reviews of law in the movies and then on TV. We also share some of our more interesting cases. We're always putting out new videos. So if you like that, please hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell.